was goody. Welcome back to the Winner's Circle, y'all. Listen, chosen ones, people get obsessed with you, okay? You got to be careful out here in these streets, okay? Because your light is just so bright, you're so loving, you're so caring, you probably got these skills, this talent, you you probably um, helping people through all kind of problems and situations. You, your, just your presence alone is healing people, okay? So people get obsessed with you. But because you got all of this good, good, good DNA about you, the, just your entire genetic makeup is just so magical, you also go attract some weirdos. Let me know in the comment section if you'll be attracting some weirdos. Chosen ones attract everything. We attract all kinds of people. The good, the bad, the ugly, the, the, the CEO, the janitor, the emperor, the king, the queen, the peasants. We attract everybody because everybody wants some of that good, good energy. You know what I'm saying? But before I get into the signs, when people is obsessed with you, if this is your first time seeing me, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. If you, my day ones, y'all already know, you already a part of the Winner's Circle. The Winner's Circle is popping because of you. I love y'all so much okay but let's get into this video okay you guys people get obsessed with chosen ones y'all and there's there's so many signs out there but i only got a few of y'all a few of them for you right now but there are so many signs out there these are the main ones that i feel like um are really like more predominant in people's lives but um you got to be careful because obsession is a you playing a dangerous game when people start to become obsessed with you okay if they don't if, if you don't know the signs, you're not paying attention, you're not aware, it, it could lead to destruction, disaster, all kind of weird stuff going on. I mean, I'm talking about restraining orders, calling the police on people. Like, people are weirdos. Like, people are weirdos, okay? So, let's get into these signs, though, so you guys can become aware when you start to see these signs. Like, okay, yeah, this person got a little bit of attachment issues, a little bit of obsession, like, and it's getting a little bit crazy, okay? But before I get into the signs, I want to say don't confuse admiration with obsession okay admiration when somebody admires you it admiration is when somebody um wants to give you respect they respect you for your talent they respect you for your work ethic they respect you for your knowledge for your for your gifts for your wisdom they respect you for um your success they respect you for um they they, they simply want to give credit where credit is due okay when when somebody admires you they just want to give credit where credit is due admiration has a very positive connotation they just want to um they just want to show you that they appreciate um your sacrifice Sacrifice. They appreciate you putting your best foot forward. They see you getting through things that uh, might be more difficult than other people. They just want to simply give credit where credit is due. That's what admiration is, okay? So don't confuse admiration with obsession, okay? Obsession is when you live rent-free in somebody's head and they want to possess you. Um, obsession has a very negative connotation. They want to control you. They want to. Um, they always want to get their hands in the cookie jar. It turns into a very... Um, a very diluted, um, demonic type of type type of admiration. It goes from being, um, it goes from them admiring you to them wanting to um, possess you and control you and ha have it this way or no way else. Okay, so don't confuse admiration with obsession. I don't want y'all out there telling, calling people, oh, you obsessed with me, and they just simply admire you. You you you'll be able to feel the energy behind it. You'll be able to feel. Um, the intentions behind it. When somebody admires you, it feels good. It doesn't feel controlling. It doesn't feel suffocating. It doesn't feel like a bad thing. You could feel the lightheartedness, the featherness about it. You could feel the um just the grace about it. When somebody is obsessed with you, you could feel the negative energy behind it. You could feel like like uh it it it'll give you the ick. Okay, so trust the energy that you feel behind it because energy don't lie. Comment in the comment section. Energy don't lie. Okay, so don't confuse admiration with obsession. Okay, you guys but let's get it let's get into these signs um the first sign that somebody is probably obsessed with you is um they start copying you they start mimicking you okay now again so let me break this down though when people copy you and mimic you don't confuse the obsession with um inspiration okay because i get inspired by um other uh, other creators other uh youtubers other life coaches they truly inspire me um th um they might say something that triggers a thought in my head. Um, they might do something that triggers my own creativity. That's that's me getting inspiration from them. Okay, um, versus obsession when people start to mimic you, they 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 literally start start to um, number one, they won't give credit where credit is due. Okay, they won't say, oh, I got this from so and so, I got that from this person, or um, they, you know how like in school, um, y'all remember plagiarism, right? 
So like in school, you would have to state your site. You would have to um, state your source, um, state the site where you got it from, what the quote is and, and who it was by. You have to have all these components to avoid plagiarism. Well, when somebody is copying you, it's pure plagiarism. They're trying to take something that, something that that you have and make it their own but baby listen god said your swag is tailor-made and it can't be mim man comment in the comment section my swag is tailor-made okay your swag your style your gifts is tailor-made can't nobody do it quite like you okay now when somebody gets inspired by you um they have no problem stating the source they have no problem saying who they learn from they have no problem saying um Oh, you know, this person helped me. This person guided me. This person did this for me. This person, whatever the case may be. But when somebody is mimicking you all the time, and it, it's just like, it, it's almost like they completely mirror you all the time, all the time. And, and you could tell it's not inspiration. It's more of an obsession thing because you get that creepy vibe from it, that creepy feel from it. Like, like, dang, why are they constantly on my bumper like that? Baby, listen. They got an obsession issue. They got an obsession with you, okay? Now, some people, you know, we get... We get um, a little bit annoyed when people copy us, okay? Um, one of these videos, I can't remember which video it was, but I, I made a video and I was talking about being the center of attention. I think it was like two or three videos ago, being the center of attention. Not because you want to be, but because you are, um, you, you're the most honorable in the room. You, you're, the, you're the most saucy in the room, okay? And I think one of, somebody had commented, was like, um, I disagree with being the center of attention. You know, people are copying me and I don't like this. Listen, when people copy you, that means you're influential, okay? Whether you like it or not. We get annoyed, super annoyed when people copy us, when people mimic us but you got to understand that it's you're, you're being influential okay you have something that they want to possess you have something that they want to do like that they want to be like that they want to look like that they want to smell like that they want to wear like that the, you have something about you that's trendy that they want to have they want they want whatever they see in you they want that for themselves okay now you just have to use your discernment on Okay, how far are they taking this mimicking? How far are they taking um, copying me, copying my style, copying my hair, copying my swag, copying me, my fashion, copying the way I talk? Whatever you got going on, whatever it is, and it could be anybody. You you could be doing the bare minimum in your life, but when you when you got that light in you, when you got that favor on you, people notice. It doesn't matter if you try to dumb it down or not. It doesn't matter if you try to be the center of attention or not. Because ten times out of ten, you're part of the winner circle. You're a chosen one. You're not trying to do any of these things. It is simply in your DNA. It is simply in your genetic makeup and you can't help it it's something that you cannot turn off and the more enlightened you become the more you start loving on yourself the more you start activating your gifts activate your power it's only going to get bigger and bigger okay so when somebody is mimicking you and copying you try not to get too annoyed with it try not to focus on oh my god they're copying me you know how many people copy my content like on, on instagram and youtube and and um and facebook like i don't care I'm inspiring them, but but I tell you what, I know my work when I see it. When I see my work and other people doing it, listen, they can't maintain it. They 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 could pro they could try to copy it. They could try to you know speak about the same topic, the same subject, and that's not a problem. You know, um, I get inspiration from people all the time. I get topic ideas from people all the time. But you, I, I know my work when I see it. So I know when someone is continuously copying me, continuously doing this, and. My work, my work, come. I get inspiration from other people, but what I do is I might take an idea and then I make it my own. I put my own experience in it, my own lifestyle in it. Now, if we share the same experience, the same walk of life, then our our situations, our content might um might be um might be similar or whatever. But take it as a compliment when people are trying to copy you. They see something in you that they don't have and they want it to be a part of them. They want to mimic you. They want it to they want to um they want to be able to walk like you, be able to talk like you. They whatever it is, they want to be able to do it and pull it off just like you. But they can't. This is why they have to adopt someone else's choices, adopt someone else's mentality, adopt someone else's um way of life, adopt the way someone else is someone else dress or, or the way that you do things, okay? So you you just got to use your discernment on how far is they taking this obsession? And when you start to see somebody um, always mimicking you, uh, what I like to do is, especially if they're close to me, if they're at work, if they're um, maybe in a, a group that you go to, um, I go to boxing a lot. And so I'm starting to see people at the gym that I go to um, 
you know, start to wear some of the same type of workout clothes, um, some of the same, you know, and, and it's okay. Like I take pleasure in it because I'm the trendsetter in the environment. But when I notice someone um, being a little bit too clingy towards me, you know, I might say, hey, but I start to keep them a little bit at a, at a distance to let them know like, okay, I, I talk to you. I might rock with you a little bit, but you're not on my inside crew. So keep a just keep a little bit of a distance, okay, you guys. You'll you'll be able to know when that inspiration, that admiration, is turning into obsession, and you need to fall back. You need to set a boundary. You need to um um you, you probably might me, might not need to. You probably need to um not communicate as much or hang out with them as much. You'll understand. You'll know. Listen to your body. Your body will tell you exactly what you need to be doing, how you need to be acting, how you need to be responding to people around you, okay? So don't always get too upset when people are copying you, okay? It could be so annoying. I know, y'all. It could be so annoying. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, you doing something that they can't do. And so, or they don't understand how to cultivate it like you. So they got to copy you. They got to... And, it's, like I said, you'll understand if it's a difference between admiration and obsession, but that's the number one sign when people is constantly focused on you, constantly focused, uh, do, doing what you're doing, doing this, doing that. That's obsession, baby. It's obsession. Okay. It's giving obsession. We gonna move on though. Cause I could talk about that one all day. We're going to move on. The second sign that somebody is obsessed with you or people are obsessed with you, man, chosen one, listen, People get obsessed with you. I just need y'all to know these signs because you're just so beautiful. You're just shining so much. People just, they just obsessed with you, okay? So the second one is, <laughs> this one is so funny to me, y'all. This one is so funny. I get this all the time. I get this all the time. When you start getting people playing on your phone, you start having people, you get random text messages from numbers that's not stored in your phone and they asking questions like, hi, is this, um, I'm looking for, I'm looking for Jessica. I'm looking for Kevin. Is this Kevin's number? Is this Jessica's number? I'm, I'm looking for, um, a realtor. Is this a realtor's number? You might get somebody um, randomly on your socials, start spamming your content, leaving random comments. Oh, you this, you ain't that, da, 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 da. And listen to me, y'all. 10 times out of 10, and I do mean 10 times out of 10, is somebody you know. Them random phone calls you getting, somebody calling blocked, calling you hanging up, calling, leaving blank voicemails, ain't saying nothing on the voicemail, is somebody you know. They obsessed with you, baby. And 10 times out of 10, you not tripping. You already know who it is. You you got an inkling, oh, that's so-and-so. Maybe it's somebody that you uh, you fell out with, somebody that you blocked. Maybe it's somebody that you don't really talk to. Maybe it's somebody that you do talk to. I've seen that case too. I've seen, I've had friends got, done caught, get, done got caught red-handed. We, we, we on good terms. But then on the flip side, because you obsessed with me, you playing on my phone. And I'm venting to you talking about somebody playing on my phone the whole time is you. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section, y'all. I got to be going to church with somebody on this one. You be getting random phone calls? Ran and you know, good damn well, you're not beefing with nobody. Ain't nobody. We too grown. Ain't nobody. There's no reason for somebody to be playing on your phone other than somebody obsessed with you. There's no reason for random numbers to be calling you. Maybe you, maybe you do nails and that's your business. That's your profession. But somebody keep messaging you, asking you, um, can they make an appointment to get a, a BBL or a tummy tuck or something? And you like, why is it? Why do I keep getting random messages? Like I'm a nail tech. Why do I keep getting random messages? Or I'm a barber. Why do I keep getting random text messages inquiring about, um, about being, being a gardener? And it's completely, totally off from what you do in your profession. I'm telling y'all, I, I listen to Coach E, I'm telling y'all, it's somebody that you know and they obsessed with you. That's the number one sign that somebody obsessed with you. Especially if they lost access to you, you might be mad at them. You might, um, might, might not be talking to them for a second. They're going to do something to get your attention. They feel like if they can't have your attention in a positive light because you didn't cut them off, you didn't, you didn't ghost at them, you didn't left them alone, you didn't stop talking to them, they're going to get that negative attention. Attention... Attention from the chosen one is attention, no matter if it's positive or negative. They need it. They need your attention. It don't matter if, it, if they can't get that positive attention from you because you didn't cut them out your life. Trust me, they, gonna, they want that negative attention. They want your attention. Man, comment in the comment section. My attention is valuable. Your attention is valuable. They need your attention, whether if it's positive or negative. You got somebody blowing up your phone. You got somebody... um. 
leaving blank voice messages from block numbers. Baby, listen, it is somebody you know. I could... <laughs> Let me know in the comment section, y'all. Y'all got to talk amongst each other in the comment section. Let me know because I know I'm not tripping. I, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I know y'all know what I... Y'all always know what I'm talking about. That's why we're here together. We resonate with each other. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You got somebody blowing up your... Just randomly blowing up your, your socials, leaving negative comments, and it's from a fake profile. You're like, who is this? Like, why did they just, they just woke up and decided to come on my page? It don't matter what you, you can have nothing on your page. You ain't got to be a content creator. You ain't got to be doing nothing fantastic. Uh, you, you just got random blank pages messaging you in your DMs, in, on Messenger, calling you through Messenger, hanging up, um, sending you all kind of friend requests from them fake pro profiles. Baby, listen, it's somebody you know. And you know it, you know it. I'm your confirmation. So if you if you ever having this, this random phone calls, text messages, DMs on so blowing up your socials, and you think it you you think you tripping and you like, I feel like it's so-and-so, but nah, there's no way to prove it. I'm baby, I'm your confirmation. It's that person that you're talking about. Uh, listen, I am here to I'm your confirmation. I'm confirming for you. It's that person. The first person that came to mind when you said it, that's who it is. That first person that came to mind, that was your intuition until, until your ego started to say, nah, started to reason with it. There's no way to prove it that there, no, that first person that came to mind, that's exactly who it is. That's exactly who it is. Listen to me, y'all. I'm seasoned when it comes to this stuff. I know when somebody playing on my phone. When, when a random text message come through, random DMs come through, somebody spamming my, my, my content, my videos, I'll be knowing exactly who it is. My intuition don't lie. My gut feeling don't lie. I be knowing exactly who it is. Listen to me, y'all. I'm seasoned with this. It's that person you know. It's somebody you know. It's somebody obsessed with you. And again, if they can't get positive attention from you, they're going to get that negative attention from you. Or they want both. They want it all. All, all. Brand new socks and drawers. <laughs> I be balling every time I stop and talk to y'all. I want it all. Uh, what's that song, y'all? <laughs> I want it all. All, all. Drop that, drop that song in the comment section if you know what I'm talking about. That's old school. But um, anyways, y'all, they, they want that attention. Your attention is so valuable. Your attention is so um, it's so enriching to people. So they don't care if it got to be positive attention or negative attention. They want that attention. They want that enrichment from you, okay? <laughs> don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. It ain't no random person calling you from a uh, kicking bird dental. <laughs> that, that's somebody you know, baby. That's somebody you know. They obsessed, okay? Okay. Okay, so the third one. <laughs> the third one is, um, okay, y'all. This one could be, this one got gray areas, okay? So another way you know somebody is obsessed with you, whether it be friend, family member, coworker, neighbor, is when they don't want to connect, they don't want you to connect with other people. They feel like it's going to threaten their relationship with you. Now, a lot of, the, this got gray areas because... A lot of the times you hear like friends doing this. Oh, you can't have no other friends. That that girl ain't your friend. I'm your only friend. Especially people who are best friends. They get into this um, this cycle of um, you don't need to talk to nobody. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. And let me tell you, you playing a dangerous game when you let somebody become extremely territorial over it. You playing a dangerous game, okay? Now, I, I get it. I understand. Like, I had a best friend of 23 years. Um, unfortunately, we're not as close as we used to be, but for 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 reasons or whatever. But um, I get it. Like, you don't want um, you don't want somebody to say that that that's your best friend and you earned that title. You've been there for that person and vice versa. Y'all have the longevity. Like, I get that. I understand that completely. And I'm not talking about that, but. A true, genuine friend is not going to impede you or prohibit you from um, expanding, from expanding, making new connections, because new connection open up new doors, open up new perspectives, open up new um, new lifestyles, new way of living. You want to be able to expand. When you make new connections, especially connections that are healthy for you, especially connections, uh, and that's usually what it be like. A, a, a friend might see you get a new friend, and they see that that new friend maybe got it going on. They're a business owner, can open doors for you, can collaborate with you, and now all of a sudden, they, su they super terrible over you don't you don't need no new friends get rid of her da, 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 da. now i get it if there's a friend out there who who's telling you you know what that person is not good for you and they have valid reason to say that that's a whole nother story but if you got a friend who who's who's very territorial over you 
always just want you in their corner, always just want their hands in your cookie jar, telling you you don't need other friends, giving you problems when you have other friends. Man, let's talk about it, okay? I had a, um, I had somebody booked a session. Man, book a session with me. Y'all know I'm a life coach. Book a session with me. So somebody had booked a session a long time ago. It's probably about, almost probably like two years ago now. Um, she she had her, her friend. And, you know, it, normally it was just her and her friends. She had other friends, but she didn't hang out with them as often. It was her ace boom crew. We just go, for the sake of this example, we just going to say it's her best friend, okay? So her and her best friend, you know, always tie her ace boom, whatever. And her birthday comes, right? Her birthday comes. Her and her, her, she invite her best friend, but then she also invite, invited some other people that she loves. You know what I'm saying? It's her birthday. She want the more the merrier, the, the celebration. You know what I mean? She invited some people that she get along with at work who she considers friend. Some, some people that maybe she hasn't seen in a while, but maybe, um, they used to be tight back in the day and she wants to catch up, you know, connecting with these people and they all want to be there for her. They, they all come. So her best friend at her birthday, they, they went to some kind of kick, some lounge, some, some club or whatever, and she had a VIP section for her birthday, okay? Her best friend started fights with every single last one of, uh, one of them other females that she invited. And I'm not talking about arguments. I'm talking throwing bows, okay? I'm talking about fist fights. I'm talking about physical altercation in the club, at the VIC, at the VIP section, fighting. Fit, th I'm, I'm talking about throwing punches with her other guests, because she too territorial and too jealous. You got to be careful. There is nothing cute about somebody being too territorial over, over you. Now, if you got a friend and y'all just joking like, heck, you, uh, that's your friend, but can't nobody be your friend like me. Can't nobody entertain you like me. Can't no, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's all cool and dandy. But again, like I said, listen to your body. You'll be able to tell if somebody is, okay, that's a little bit too territorial for me. Like, I feel, if you if you feel a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of obsession, listen to it. Listen to it, you guys. People literally lose their lives over jealousy. People literally lose their lives, fighting for their lives, end up in jail behind jealousy, behind obsession. There's nothing cute about that. Don't ever give somebody the impression that they own you so much, that they that they can control you, that they own you, that they possess you so much because they're your friend, they're your best friend, they've been knowing you for this amount of long, that they can block you from making other connections. Uh-uh. That's a red flag. And at the Winter Circle, we don't collect red flags. Some of y'all collect the red flags like bouquets out here, walking around with a, a whole bouquet of red flags. Get rid of it. Uh-uh. Start to draw some lines. Start to fall back. Start to set some boundaries. Listen to your body. You will know if a friend is just playing like, oh, she said she don't want me to have no other friends. Or if they genuinely got some obsession. It's genuinely being territorial. It's genuinely like borderline like you're a psychopath. You're a psycho and I'm not going for it. We don't do psychos, y'all. You are too valuable to be in relationships, friendships that prevent you from making new connections, healthy new connections, blocking your connections, hating on your connections, throwing shade on your connections. Uh-uh. It's unacceptable. You play a dangerous game when you start to feed into that. Um, and I, I feel like it's very juvenile. It's very immature. It's very childish. I wish one of my friends would tell me I can't have new friends. That's my business. That's up to me. Now, if I have a friend that's been my friend for a very long time, do, do I trust her judgment? Do I trust her, her opinions? Absolutely. But again, use your intuition. Use your gut. You, <laughs> you've got to be able to decipher. what You can trust yourself. You can trust yourself. You can trust yourself. What, listen to your body. Your body going to always tell you what's popping off. Your body going to tell you. Energy don't lie. Your body is going to have a certain reaction to energy. It does not lie. So trust that, okay? Trust it. Trust it, okay? Don't, don't let nobody control the type of connections you got going on. Because whoever controlling it, they might be your friend today and your enemy tomorrow. Who knows? Who knows? Okay? Moving on. Moving on. Y'all, number <laughs> number four, number four, that somebody is obsessed with you, people be obsessed with you, is they don't respect your personal space. Have you ever had a friend, a family member? Usually this is how, th this takes place in a lot of friends too, just like the last one. Um, when I say that they, they don't respect your personal space, they call you too much. And that's not to say you don't, you don't want to talk to your friend every day or whatever. 
but they too involved. They pop up without be without calling. They they feel like they can just intrude on your life. They feel like they could just um they just got. I, I've had people. I've I've had I've had friends where I had to tell them like yeah hey. You need to call before you come over here. Yes, we great friends, but don't just pop up at my house. You don't know what I got going on. You don't know if I'm tired. You know if I'm chilling, if I want company. My social battery might be dead right now. Um, I got kids. You don't know if I got to do this. You don't know if you, for married people, you don't know if you, if you just trying to chill with your husband, your spouse. It's unacceptable. They don't respect your personal space. They obsess, baby. They obsess. Or, or or maybe maybe they text you or something and maybe 10 minutes go by and they see, you know, they blowing your phone up, cussing you out because you haven't responded in a timely fashion that they want you to. Uh, uh We too damn grown to be all in your feelings because I didn't respond to you in 10 minutes, in 20 minutes. Now, granted, you know, when energy changes and your friend is acting funny and who you texted and they haven't responded to you for 17 hours. That's a different ball game because you know the typical patterns between y'all. Everybody has a typical pattern between them. Every everyone, no matter the dynamic of a relationship, everyone has a typical pattern between them. If it's not, if it's not, if it goes against your typical pattern, okay, you know somebody just acted funny, or you just acted funny with them. But if somebody is cussing you out because you're not you're not responding to them in a timely fashion, or they blowing your phone up, if it's not an emergency. It's, it's giving obsession, baby. Why has it been 30 minutes and I got four text messages and 12 missed phone calls from you in 30 minutes? I can't even take a shower, get out the shower, dry off, moisturize my body. Ooh, speaking of moisturizing your body. Y'all, it's winter time. Winter is kicking in. Get, get you some body butter. This, mm, ooh, it matches. It matches my sports bra. This one is called Powerpuff Girl, y'all, and it smells so good. Look at the different colors in there. Get you some body butter. Keep your skin moisturized so you have that popping, glowing skin when the summertime hit. A lot of people think that, oh, it's not summertime. I don't need to moisturize. I don't need to be glowing. No. you, you t That's like saying I only take care of myself in different seasons. Take care of yourself year round, okay? Moisturize that skin. When you moisturize year round, when summertime hit, baby, you going to be popping. Get you some body butter, okay? I'm going to have the link in the pinned comment section, okay? Get you some body butter. Stay hydrated. Stay moisturized. This, this is good for uh, rosacea, um, acne, um, any kind of eczema, any kind of dry skin, okay? This body butter will cure any kind of skin element that you have that is not good for you, okay? All right. Let's keep on going, though. Oh, no, no, no. I want, you, I want to talk about this one, too, though. Mm. Mm, this one is manifest money, okay? When you get get you some manifest money, okay? Get you the manifest money body butter. And when you put this on, I want you to say these affirmations. I want you to I want you to put this on and say um say no matter what I do or where I go, money always shows up to support me. No matter what I do or where I go, money always shows up to support me. Say that while put it on your money manifestation body butter. And it has an aromatherapy smell. It's not just for women. It's for men and women. And on the website, um, they have men and women um, um, skin stuff, okay? But, okay, let's keep going, though, y'all. Let's keep going. Uh, what was I saying, though? What was I saying? What was I saying, y'all? What was I saying? Tell me what was I saying. What was I saying? Um, oh, okay. I, I was talking about... Um, um, people being obsessed with you, calling you too much, um, just impeding on your personal space and then having an attitude like, like you can't have no personal space. You can't have no personal boundaries. It is unacceptable. You guys, it's unacceptable. It's given obsession. Another way people, um, impede on your personal space, your personal boundaries is calling you terms of endearment. That's not appropriate for the relationship. It's not appropriate for the dynamic between the two of you. And what I mean by that is, um, Oh, I'm going to give y'all two good examples, okay? And y'all know me. I can only speak from experience, but hopefully the examples I'll be giving y'all, y'all can under, you really understand. But, um, so back in the day, I had, um, a female friend. Um, she was, um, she, she you know, she liked women or whatever. She liked, um, girls or whatever. She was a, a lesbian, which th there's no problem. Like, I, who, who people have sex with, who, what they got going on, that is not my personal business. I love all people. I love all walks of life and I do not discriminate, okay? And this person was a good friend of mine, a really good friend of mine. And, and she still is. Um, But um, she used to call me baby mama. And I used to have to tell her, stop calling me baby mama. I, like, it, it, it's inappropriate. We're friends. I'm not your baby mama. We're friends. And I love you, but I'm not your baby mama. 
And then I started to notice that she was doing it only when we was in public. If we went to the mall together, if we was out and about together, whatever it was that we was doing, she wanted to, it was almost like she was being territorial in front of other people saying, you, you know, and people who didn't know me or know her and they see us walking by and she's saying, baby mama this, baby mama that. What kind of message does that send? If you don't know me and you see me walking with a, a like, like a lesbian woman, like a dykish one or whatever. And, uh, and again, I don't care people's walks of life. I respect everybody. But what kind of message is this? And what would you think about me if I'm walking with, you didn't know me, you see me walking with a friend, and a lesbian or whatever, an obvious one, an obvious dyke, and they calling me baby mama. Listen, baby, it's not appropriate. And you're doing it in public, you're doing it on purpose. You're trying to insert, low key, insert domination, like giving off the impression like we together is something. It's giving obsession. We're friends, fall back. It's not appropriate. When you see st when stuff like that is happening, you got to check it. You got to check it. Because if you don't, they're going to keep doing it. You got to check. Man, let me know in the comment section if you know what I'm talking about. If you can relate to this, okay? Uh, uh, one more example. Another example is um, people calling you a term of endearment that's not appropriate for the dynamic between y'all. Is when, um, and this one might be controversial to y'all. I don't know, but I don't, I don't, I ain't going for it. Um, dudes like to call me bae all the time. And I'm like, listen, I'm not your bae. And y'all know I'm a content creator, you know, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all of that is popping. It's a lot of followers or whatever. And, you know, every randomly, you know, not randomly, all, a lot of the times, you know, people, dudes would be in the comment section like, bay this, bay that, whatever. I can't control everybody, all these thousands of comments, millions of comments or whatever. But if I'm out in public, like, let's say I'm at a cookout or something, and, and it's like all the dudes want to call me bay. I'm not your bae. As a matter of fact, it's a privilege to call me bae. Only my man can call me bae. Bae is a term of endearment that only my man has the privilege of calling me. I'm not just everybody's bae. You got to have standards. You got to have boundaries, y'all. It is not, everybody shouldn't be calling you baby. Everybody shouldn't be calling you bae. That's a privilege. If I just let every man call me bae, then when I get in a relationship, what my bae actually gonna call me? Uh-uh. Check them where they stand, y'all. I'm not playing. This might be controversial, y'all. Y'all might like being called bae by every dude, but I don't. You're not fit. I'm not your bae. Because you overstepping and you low-key inserting a term of endearment. Now, if somebody walked past me and didn't know who we are, again, like I used in the last example, and they hear you bae this, bae that, they going to assume that you my man and you not. And what I look like having four, five, six different dudes at a cookout calling me bae. Cut it. You got to check people where they stand. Stop calling me bae. It is a privilege to call me bae. Can't just know any man call me bae. Only my man could call me that and you not him. Like you just not him. Like, <laughs> let me know y'all. Like, let me know if I trip it or what. Maybe, maybe my standards, my boundaries might be a little bit too much for some people. Some of y'all might like that. But listen, I don't let every man call me bae, baby, my, what? Y'all know I'm a life coach. It be some dudes booking sessions with me. As soon as they get on the call, hey, ma, excuse me? You booked a session with me. You can call me Ebony. You can call me Coach E. But I'm not your ma. You're not finna get on this phone trying to game me. You need to cut it. Because <laughs> you can get hung up. Like, no, 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 no. There are boundaries. Let, let Make people respect you and what you stand for. You don't stand for nothing. You'll, st you'll fall for anything, baby. What do I look like being married or in a relationship, a committed relationship with somebody, and I got people on the phone calling me my, everywhere I go, dudes calling me bae, dudes all in my inbox calling me baby, my, this. like, no, 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 pump your brakes. You got to pump them brakes, baby, because I'm not going for it. <laughs> Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. Okay, let me let me stop rambling about that. Let me stop. <laughs> All right, y'all. Number five. Let, let me hurry up because I've been on this camera a long time. Let me <laughs> let me y'all y'all know I'm long winded. I, I I will get on this thing and talk, baby. But um, the fifth one, the fifth sign that somebody is um obsessed with you is <sighs> yeah. You start to see controlling tendencies, controlling tendencies like. Especially in friends and family. Whew, friends and family be having it bad, y'all. They got it honest. They want they, they want to tell you what to do, how to do it, why to do it. 
They want you to do it their way. It's like they want to they want to keep you anchored to them. They want to they want to keep you on a leash. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You got somebody in your life who's trying to tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, especially especially parents. It's, I just got to keep it real, y'all, especially parents. And for this example, it might it, it might be hard to pick. You know, you might be like, my parents not obsessed with me. But if you got a parent that get mad because you won't do something the way that they want you to do it. I hate to break it to you, baby. That's a form of, a, of obsession. If they can't control the way that you doing it, they obsess the, the way that you live in your life. They obsessed with how you maneuver in life. They obsessed with whatever it is that you got going on. You, man, let me cook. Y'all know that it be parents out there who get mad because you won't do something that they want you to do, how you want you to, how they want you to do it, when they want you to do it. And, and listen, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep it real with y'all and, and keep it personal with y'all. Like I had a family member who, who, who wanted me to move somewhere with them, and because I didn't started to treat me like crap because they wanted me to move by them. They wanted me to help them. They wanted, they wanted to have more insight on what I got going on. They wanted to be on the, on the ins and outs and tell me how to do it, when to do it, what I should do. They wanted to completely take over what I got going on. And when I said no, that control factor, that control tendency was completely snatched from them. So it pissed them off. If you got a family member, some friends in your life that get mad at you because you won't do something the way they want you to do it or to take an action that they want you to take, baby, it's obsession. It's obsession. We're going to move on, though, because I'm getting real long-winded in this video. All right, y'all. Um, so the, the sixth sign that somebody is obsessed with you is they... <laughs> They, they, they give you advice and they all, they always give you advice that, that keeps you on a downward spiral. It's never advice that can, um, you know, that, that, that phrase, that term or whatever it is that say, um, you teach a man how you can either give a man a fish or you can teach him how to fish and they can eat for the rest of their life. It's almost like that. They only give you just enough information on whatever it is that you need help with, whatever it is that you need advice with, whatever it is that you need, um, guidance on. They give you just enough, but it, it it's never enough to like, send you on your life. It's never enough for, for you to, 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 to thrive and to just take off in life. It's always just enough just to keep you coming back. It's always just enough just to keep you coming back. It's always enough just to keep you stagnant a little bit, keep you dependent on them. It's never enough to get, to get you in an independent state of mind to just live life. I mean, I'm telling you, especially them family members, or they give you the wrong advice on purpose. So then you can come back crying to them. The mama's boy. Uh, Y'all know I'm a life coach. Uh, the, I love my mom. Thank you so I'm, God, thank you for my mom. Thank you for my mom. Because she be giving me some gems, okay? But y'all know I'm a life coach and I <laughs> book a session with me. I'll be talking to some people. They feel like their mamas be giving them wrong advice on purpose because it be an obsession. It be competing. Man, let me know in the comment section if you know what I'm talking about. If this resonates with you. You ever felt like, felt like your mama or, or anybody? Friends, family members, coworkers, bosses give you the wrong advice just so you can keep coming back. Give you the wrong advice just so you can be crying in their arms later on. It's almost like Munchausen syndrome. Without the death, without the without the um, physical disease, it's emotional disease, emotional anguish, mental anguish. Send you on the wrong path just so just so you can just so you can keep coming back to them for advice for for guidance so you can cry in their arm. So you can feel like the, so you can feel like you need them. They need to feel needed by you. Like I mentioned earlier, you got that good, good energy. They they want some of it, whether it's positive energy or negative energy. They want some of it. <laughs> Ew. Ew. All right, y'all. Number seven. The seven sign somebody is obsessed with you is they know your every move. They know the way you walk. They know the way you talk. They know the way you hold your mouth. They notice how many hairstyles you have a week. They notice what colors look good on you. They know what shirt you wore 12 weeks ago. They know what dinner, you, what restaurant you posted at 18 months ago. He'd be like, how do you? Listen, they know because they obsess. They're studying you. They study your every move. They know the way you hold your mouth. They know what triggers your laughter. They can mimic your laugh to a T. You got somebody studying you like that? It's obsession. They obsess with you. 
Let me let us know in the comments as you know what I'm talking about. Have you ever, have you ever experienced this? They obsessed with you. They are studying you. They are studying your every move. They are obsessed with you, okay? <laughs> they they know everything about you. They know stuff about you that you don't even remember. You'd be like, what? They could tell you what you had on last week. They could tell you what you did last week. They could tell you what you did 12 weeks ago. Or you get notifications of somebody liked a picture that you posted a year ago. It's obsession. They're studying you. They scrolling on you. They look, they looking you up. They study you. They checking on you. They checking your socials before they check their kids' homework. <laughs> they checking on, they checking you out before they even check their kids' homework. It's obsession, baby. It's obsession. All right, y'all. Number, <laughs> they study every aspect of you, okay? Number eight, the last sign that somebody is obsessed with you is um, they have no identity. They, they have no identity. It goes back to the first one. They start copying you. The way you walk, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you do your hair, the way you style your clothes. It's almost as if like, it's almost as if like you invited them to your house and they went in your closet and put your whole fit on and act like they, and act like you ain't there watching them put on your whole fit. Like what? And making it seem like they just went to the store and bought it. And it was just a coincidence that they got the same fit as you. But you you know, you just saw them go in your closet and put your stuff on, like, and come out with your whole clothes on. Like, what? What? Your 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 entire existence becomes their identity. They start going the same places as you, and they never went there before. They start talking like you, they start using similar gestures. Um, chosen ones always got their own lingo. Chosen one, if you're a real chosen one, you can come up with your own lingo, baby. I come up with my own lingo all the time. All the time. They start using your lingo. They start, and, and again, there, there's nothing wrong. If you got close friends, of course there's going to be similarities. Of course you're going to rub off on each other. Of course you're going to have inside jokes and you're going to use the same lingo a little bit. Of, you know what I'm saying? That's normal. That's normal behavior for, for friends. But when somebody has no identity, and they completely try to take over your identity, every aspect of you, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you dress, the way you maneuver, the way you, the way you do gestures. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't make excuses for these people, okay? Don't make excuses. It's given obsession. Now, it's up, for, it's up to you to decide what you're going to do with it, how you're going to treat them or whatever. Book a session with me. I help you, I help you out with that. How to figure out how to, uh, where, where to place them at in your life. But it's obsession. If they completely hijack your identity, it's obsession. There's no way. There's no way that I, you know, I might get inspiration by somebody. I might feel like, oh, like I like how you do this or how you put a spin on that. But there's no way you will see me adopting someone's entire identity. Chosen ones, you the trend setter. You're not the trend follower. Comment in the comment section if you be setting trends. Let's go. <laughs> you be setting trends, baby. <laughs> you be setting trends. They, when somebody has copied and mimicked your complete identity. Come here. You that one. Comment in the comment section. I'm that one. <laughs> but let me get off of here, y'all. I've been on here for a long time. I love y'all so much. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know which uh, sign resonate with you. Multiple signs probably re resonate with you. You a chosen one. You got that it factor, okay? I love y'all. See you next time.